Yo, what up? This is Josh Rubin from East West Healing and Performance. Today, I want to talk about why I am not a fan of juicing, or why we at East West Healing and Performance are not a fan of juicing. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, well, I juice and I feel great, and Jack Elaine juiced and he lived till he was 80, and I know this person that healed because they juiced, and that's all fine and dandy. The Gershon Institute uses juicing, and he's Dr. Gershon, and you're just Josh Rubin. What do you know? And you're putting out falsified information and yada, yada, yada. You know, I do the YouTubes. It's my business. I'm sharing my opinion, what I learned. If you really have something to say and disagree, why don't you blog and do a YouTube so we can have a healthy debate instead of just telling me I'm wrong. But based on my research and based on our clientele, this is our opinion of why we don't like juicing. I don't care if someone lives till they're 90. You know, there's always that person, I, uh, back in the day when I was in college, I worked in a rehab center, and there was people, there was a guy that I met, he was 108, he still had a tattoo from being in a concentration camp, and the guy was put in the, um, the nursing home of this big rehab facility when he was like 95 years old, but up to that point, he smoked cigarettes and drank whiskey every day. Not in excess, he would have maybe a glass and smoked a couple cigarettes, but I think some people just have that genetic makeup that's going to allow them to live old no matter what they do. So there's always those one or two or five or ten people that live to that age. But based on human physiology and based on, you know, plant physiology and based on our philosophy, juicing is not something we agree with. Now, using fruit juices, maybe making your own, a pulp for your own juice, maybe your own lemonade, taking out the pulp, uh, etc., it's much more beneficial. I mean, we've talked about the benefits of orange juice, and I could put the YouTube down in the description. But, I mean, it's it's basically, it's got high amounts of salicylates in it besides vitamin C, which can help with thyroid conversion. But if you're drinking a glass of, like, a natural anti-inflammatory substance, that's not only anti-inflammatory, but salicylates actually help regulate or upregulate how our cells use oxygen and glucose efficiently. efficiently. At the same time, it's loaded with potassium and magnesium, which help with blood sugar regulation help with relaxation and down-regulating a lot of excitatory markers in the body. But when it comes to juicing, it's pretty simple. Now, if you still want to juice, go for it. I'm not telling you not to juice. I'm just giving you my opinion because a lot of people ask us. The first thing is this. You take what you're juicing, all these vegetables in their raw form, and you put them on a table. You get this large amount of vegetables, and you juice them, and you get this glass. So for me, the first thing is you couldn't eat all those vegetables if you tried. So for me... From a metabolic standpoint, it's very overloading to our system, to our gut. Because most people, you know, and like I've said before in my video, and I'll put down here, are you healthy? Is your diet working for you? Yeah, we can go based on symptoms and how I feel. But the elimination of symptom doesn't equate to health. And that's basically just allopathic medicine. And I've talked about how that's basically, you know, uh, it's greeniopathy, using basically natural medicine in a sense, but following the same philosophy as allopathic medicine. So you not only have to eliminate symptoms, but what's going on at the cell level? Are we actually producing energy or not? And you can see that in your body temperature and pulse. It's that simple. So if you are juicing or eating vegetarian, take your body temperature and pulse when you wake up in the morning, before you even move and get out of bed, see what it is. If it's low, you're hypometabolic or hypothyroid in a sense, based off the work of Broda Barnes. I'm not making this stuff up. So if you want to know if juicing is working for you, do that. At the same time, after you have your juice, you know, 15, 20, 30 minutes later, take your temp and pulse. Let's see if it's gone up from that morning temp and pulse. A substantial amount. And if it hasn't, we know that meal hasn't worked. So for me, the first thing is we're looking at all these vegetables. Most people couldn't eat them. Now, I know a lot of people say, yeah, they're loaded with minerals and vitamins and yada, yada, yada. But at the same time, show me the research done on the negative aspects of taking in these vegetables or the amount of these vegetables or these types of vegetables. No one's doing it. There's very few people that are doing it and these are the people that we study. Everyone's studying the benefits and we're not looking at what are some of the dangers possibly, right? We need to really look at that because just like cows can only eat grass, they can only break down cellulose, they're ruining animals, they have the stomach to do it. We feed them all these other foods just like humans and they can still actually eat it but they get very inflamed they get very toxic and die. That's why most cows are killed within six months for slaughter. Same thing as humans. We only can break down certain foods. We can eat other foods, but it doesn't mean we're gonna work. it's going to work for us, and that's why we get symptoms and disease. So the first thing is, 
I don't think people could eat all those vegetables and they put them in a juice form. So I feel like it's very overloading in a sense, whether it's nutrient-wise, calorically, fiber, lack of fiber, etc. So that's the first one. A little weak argument, but that's my, my, you know, my first thing on it. Second thing is this. When it comes to foods, now in our program, our one-on-one -on -one coaching, the Metabolic Blueprint, the Metabolic Blueprint Cookbook, we talk about this. For us, we need proteins, carbs, and fats. And we need them in a certain ratio at each meal and at the end of the day for us and who we are based on our healing, uh, what we're doing during the day, what we're not doing, etc., based on body temperature and pulse. Most people that juice are just drinking a glass of carbohydrates. And they're not getting a good balance of proteins and fats in relation to the carbohydrates. Now, we believe certain carbohydrates are very beneficial, but we don't believe that you should just eat carbohydrates alone. You need carbs, proteins, fats with every meal and at the end of the day and a specific ratio to meet your needs. And all this is based on our food logs and body temperature and pulse. So the second thing is people are having this glass of carbohydrates and the ratio of protein and fat is almost zero to the glass of carbohydrates. So from a blood sugar standpoint, a metabolic standpoint, a cellular standpoint, it's really not going to do much to regulate blood sugar and overall metabolism. If anything, it's going to overwork your systems and push you hypo to hyperglycemic. Third thing is this. Most of these things that people are actually juicing, like a lot of your above ground vegetables, so this, this third one is going to be maybe like three, four, five, and six. They're high in cellulose. Humans can't break down cellulose. A lot of people think it's very beneficial for us to get lots of cellulose. In small amounts, fibers are beneficial for us, but in large amounts, it's not beneficial. And you see this with people when they work with us. They have a diet that's high of salads and kales and broccolis and all these different things. And they're hypometabolic. And they start working with us. And we eliminate these things. And we recommend specific roots and fruits. And they get constipated. So what you're actually seeing is the baseline of their metabolism. Like I've talked about in my three-part YouTube series, Understanding the GI System Metabolically, your cells regulate and conduct if your GI system is going to actually produce hydrochloric acid and digestive enzymes. So what you're seeing is when you're constipated from eliminating these foods, you're seeing how those foods were a band-aid to move you know, feces through the bowel, but at the same time, when you take that away, you take that band-aid away, you're actually seeing the true state of your metabolism. And this happens because in a stressed state, or when the cells are not producing energy, digestive juices, hydrochloric acid, peristalsis, absorption is actually downregulated by over 50%. And this was shown by Hans Celier and many people, even like Broda Barnes. So we're getting a high amount of cellulose, which humans can't break down. Ruminant animals can only break down cellulose. Now, plants and vegetables have these for a specific reason, to keep them flexible, to keep them upright, etc. But this, because of food's a food, doesn't mean we should eat it. At the same time, when it comes to the starches, and we recommend people using starches, like a lot of the root vegetables. We're big fans of these. But we're big fans of people overcooking them to break them down, so to aid in the digestive process. Because these foods in their raw form, these starches, Yes, there's a balance of fructose and of sucrose in there, fructose and glucose, which is beneficial. But some roots have a higher amount of, of glucose than fructose. But it's really hard for us to break down these starches. And some are even just pure glucose. And when we can't break them down, they actually cause, you know, uh, like a, a fermentation, a rancification, a putrefication. And they make their way down into the lower part of the intestine, which increases bacterial overgrowth, which is a huge burden on the GI system, huge burden on the liver, and a huge burden on, on our metabolism, which is, perpetuates this hypometabolic state. So we're eating them in the raw form, which is even more of a burden to the GI system and to overall systemic cellular metabolism. So we recommend people cooking them. Now at the same time, we're looking at these roots and we're looking at these above ground vegetables, and we talk about unsaturated fats. Now, we believe that they're inflammatory in excess. Now, there's many sources, fatty fishes, nuts and seeds, nuts and seed oils, vegetable oils, etc. But these above-ground vegetables are higher, not high, but higher in unsaturated fats than roots. Roots are higher in antifungal and antibacterial properties because they're below the ground. And that is basically their predator, fungus and bacteria. So it's their protective mechanism. Just like above-ground have unsaturated fats because it keeps them flexible in the spring when they need to germinate. Because unsaturated fats in the presence of cold are actually liquid, and they oxidize in the presence of heat. Where saturated fats don't oxidize in the presence of heat, this is why tropical fruits is something we recommend, because tropical fruits are actually grown in hot climates, and the saturated fats pre prevent oxidation of the fruit. 
So under heat, they're actually liquid, and under cold, they get solid. So it's opposite. Now, these above-ground vegetables have a higher amount of unsaturated fats because it's been shown it's their protective mechanism as well to prevent um, or ward off predators from above ground because these unsaturated fats cause digestive upset. They block proteolytic enzymes, they downregulate the thyroid, they do many things. They prevent leakiness in the GI system, increase bacterial overgrowth, etc. So it causes a lot of GI upset, so it's designed to ward off predators. So for us, and the same thing is with these fruits, these, these vegetables, they all have a fiber in them. Now, to a certain extent, these fibers are protective because just like we use carrots and bamboo shoots, the fiber in the carrots and bamboo shoots has been shown to increase or absorb excess estrogen and endotoxins. We can use them just like activated charcoal to kind of, uh, as a, a food supplement to kind of detoxify the gut and take the burden off the liver so that you don't have this recirculation. So when you juice these things, not only are you having higher amounts of cellulose and unsaturated fat, but you pull away the mother fiber that these saturated fats are actually held in, and now you're getting a cup of unsaturated fats. And unsaturated fats are stored in our tissues, and according to the work of Ray Pete, it takes over four years to kind of detoxify your system from unsaturated fats. That's if you're using foods low in unsaturated fats, you're eating a balanced diet, you're regulating cell metabolism, and you're using saturated fats, which actually help the body detoxify unsaturated fats. So for us, that's kind of our belief system. You have an imbalance of ratio of proteins and fats to carbohydrates, and we can't eat all those vegetables. Secondly, I figured out what my second one was, <laughs> but these vegetables are high in cellulose. They're higher in unsaturated fats. In raw form, roots are really hard for us to break down these starches. You take away the mother fiber, so now you're getting a glass of unsaturated fats. From a, so from a health perspective, we don't believe these things are actually beneficial. Now we believe if you're using tropical fruits and you're using root vegetables and squashes and you're overcooking them, that they can be beneficial in ratio to the proteins and fats you're taking in. But just having a glass of juice, we believe is not gonna be beneficial from a cellular metabolic perspective. And for us, it really comes down to body temperature and pulse. And that's all you have to do to see if it's actually beneficial. So I know this isn't a riveting YouTube with tons of research, but the bottom line is that's our philosophy on why we don't like juicing. If it's working for you, great, keep doing it. If you think you don't have symptoms and you feel great, keep good, keep doing it. But maybe just take your body temperature and pulse one morning and see where you're at, 20 minutes after you have this juice, to see if it's actually beneficial for you. And that's going to be a great indicator to show you, maybe I feel good, but at a cellular level, it's actually not working and my body temperature is below 37 Celsius or it's below 98 degrees. So hopefully you enjoyed this quick YouTube. I try to make them quick. I'm out of here.